All right, today we're actually starting with our goal for Section 2.7, fitting a model to Data 1. We want to be able to fit an appropriate model, but that means is it y equals kx, our line situation, y equals kx squared, our parabola situation, or y equals k over x, our hyperbola situation, or y equals k over x squared, our inverse squared graph situation. So, as a quick review, let's just write those out um, because they're going to say in today's directions quite a bit, write the mathematical model that best describes the data or relationship between um, the variables. So, in order to do that, we want to be thinking of our four possibilities, which we have said in the beginning, y equals kx, which would graph into a line, first to second quadrant, if k was positive, and it would graph into a line, second to third, if k was negative. Second choice, y equals kx squared, we know opens up, a parabola that opens up when k is positive, or a parabola that opens down when k is negative y equals k divided by x, which is considered the linear version of the inverse graph, but it doesn't look linear at all. We learned that it was a curve in opposite quadrants, quadrants 1 and 3 if it was positive, quadrants 2 and 4 if k was negative. And our last choice is that y equals k divided by x squared, where we would have two branches similar to what we had in the last one, but this time those branches are in adjacent quadrants and would be graphed in the first and the second if k was positive, in the third and the fourth if k was negative. So these are our four choices, but they're not going to give you the equation today. That's the problem. Your job is to give the equation in its specific form when you finish the problem. So, what are they going to give us? Let's do a problem straight through, and let's show you what is going to happen. This was a problem similar to what we discussed um, in one of the other sections. Let's say we measured the intensity of light at various distances from a lamp and obtained the following data, where d is the distance in meters and i is the intensity in watts uh, per meter squared. So you can see that when we were two meters away it was 560 um, watts per meter squared of intensity, fairly strong. Then as we backed up, you could see, and this is one of the things I want you to look at, as x goes up, our x's are ordered and they are going up. They don't have to be going up consistently. It looks like ours is being measured every half of a foot, or sorry, a uh, meter. And so as x went up, what happened to these values? And you can see they're definitely going down. So right away, look at the data, decide. Is it a direct situation, because as x goes up, y goes up? Or is it an inverse situation, as x goes up, y goes down? This is definitely inverse. So knowing that, just by looking at the data, we're going to give ourselves two equations. We know we could have y equals k divided by x as one of our choices, or y equals k divided by x squared. Now we do not know which one of those is best, and we do not know um, what it really looks like as a graph. So if we were to graph it, and here's another key piece, you know, sometimes people say, well, it's graphing, just let's get a picture of what it looks like. Um, if you would do that, based on the data we had, you'd, you'd be expecting to see a curve in this first quadrant and a curve down here, or if it was the other one, a curve in this first quadrant and a curve in the second. But if you look at the data, we didn't graph any negative x values. So at this point, they sort of leave you out and guessing as to what kind of situation you actually have. 
Now, if we did this and we were in a line, linear situation, it would be very clear y equals kx. You would see the dot, you draw your line, you'd be able to write your equation, find your k value. If it was a parabola, I believe it would be very clear. It's the inverse situation that we have shown here that is the hardest one to figure out. Because in real life situations, you don't graph too many negative values for your x. So you're always going to have this first branch graphed. So then you have to say, well, which is it? So typically, uh, we like to take a data piece and put it into each equation. Okay, so if we go with our first one, and we'll go back and we will pick, um, and you can pick any data piece you'd like. If there's an easier one for you, fine. Uh, we're just going to pick uh, the two, 2 and 560 to start with. So if y, oops, if y is 560, we don't know k, and x was 2, we'd be looking at having to multiply both sides by 2. And when we double this, we'd get 1120. So k, our k value, would be 1120. We could then write y equals 1120 divided by x. And that could be the equation we then use to put other values in. And I'm just going to do a squiggle here so we keep our work separate. Uh, second one. Same point, just to be consistent here, when y is 560, oops, 560, we don't know k, x is 2, but 2 squared in this equation would give me a 4 down there, so we'd have to multiply by 4 on both, so this time we'd get k equals 2240. Again, write your equation, y equals, and if we have 2240 as our k value, all divided by our x squared, we should now be able to take any other point that you need, that you have in your um, list, and be able to calculate with it. So, we already used 2 and 560 as our given information to help us find k. That's what we used. So I would not use that point again, because we're just going to get in trouble if we do. It'll come back out to be equal to each other. So let's just pick another point, and it could be any one of them. I'm just going to go to the opposite end this time and say, okay, let's find out what happens. So if you put, um, this time, only the x value in, and let's see how close we get to the y value, which is supposed to be the intensity um, of 140. So, on the first one, if we said y equals 1120 divided by x, and x is now 4, you should be able to calculate, and our answer would be y is approximately 280. Do the same thing but you have the different equation now, 2240, divided by your 4, but it has to be squared. So put that in, and we get y equals 2240. If you've divided it, that should have been a divide by 16. And that came out to be exactly 140. So now you go back and you say, well, wait a minute. If these are the answers I got, let's compare to what the data said we were supposed to get. The data said we were supposed to get close to 140. So at that point, you can then say, oh, I got it. This one was closest, and it was actually right on, and it's not always going to be closest. Um, or excuse me, it's not always going to be exact. It might be the closest one, and that's why it says fit a model to data. So this was the best fit would be a good way to say it. So we found the one that was the best fit. You know, if this one over here would have been 5 away and this one would have only been 0.5 away, that would have been the best fit because it will not always be identical, exact. 
there will be some human error in the calculations. So 280 was what we were supposed to get if it was inverse as x, and 140 is what we got when it was inverse as x squared. And since that one matches, then we know our equation is y equals k over x squared and our best situation. So write the mathematical model that best describes your situation. We already found our k value. Our mathematic mathematical model is going to be that 2240 divided by x squared. That would be the mathematical model. But notice all the work that you have here. All of this, the graph, your table, how you analyze that, would all be part of the work. So you've done really two problems here. The left side one, which ended up not being correct, and the right side one, which ended up being the closest or best fit in this situation. So that's what we're looking for. Um, on our sections here, and that's what we would, we would do to complete our work. Uh, we take the data and end up with an equation, which is just the opposite from what we were doing the other day, which was taking an equation and calculating values, getting data out. So this time, as we give you data, you must give us the correct equation based on your substitution and the idea of best fit. As I said before, it won't be exact all the time, so don't be looking for it to be exact. This one was. Uh, some of your real life numbers are not going to be exact because they're decimals. They're smaller. Um, so just watch out for that. If you have any questions about that, bring those to class with you with anything else um, that you saw here that was confusing. So see you in class.